My name is Derek Dotson, and I'm the founder of The Black Sanctuary. I'm here to provide some law enforcement education for you so you can think critically about safe police interaction. In this segment, we're going to talk about the use of force model. A little disclaimer here. These are not my ideas. This is what it is. It's important for you to know the laws for where you live and for what you do. So let's get into it. You know, there's a very particular set of circumstances that an officer can use force on a subject that they're in contact with. And those defined set of circumstances is called the use of force model. The way I explain this to people is think of this as a playbook for the officer to determine what level of force to use. The most important thing to remember here is the use of force must be in proportion to the threat and can only escalate in response to the threat. Now, traditionally, there are five levels of the use of force model. Level one is officer presence. And you all know what presence is. It's when you're driving down the street and you see a police officer on the side of the road. They might not even be looking at you, but what you do is you pucker up, you check your seatbelt, you look at your speed, and you make sure your hands are at 10 and two. On level two is verbal commands. The subject who the officer is in contact with may be pacing back and forth, fist clenched, argumentative, verbally threatening them. And at that point in time, the officer is gonna use verbal commands to try to get them to cooperate lay down to the ground, get on your knees, that type of thing, right? On level three, this is where things might start to change depending on the agency. In this level, the subject is starting to become a bit more aggressive. They're starting to pull away. This might also be where they try to be static or they just drop their body weight. The officer is going to respond by using certain types of control techniques where they might have one hand on their wrist, another hand on their tricep called an escort technique. And at this level, they might be able to use pepper spray or a taser. And this depends on the department and their policy. And it's important to remember these are still less than lethal options. Now, level four, this is where defensive tactics might come in. At this point, the subject is now turned into an attacker trying to fight, they're trying to kick and punch and attack them. The officer can respond in the same manner. They can kick and punch and fight their way out of the situation trying to defeat the attacker, but they can also use tools like taser, pepper spray, and depending on the agency, this is where baton might come in. Level five is lethal force. At this level, the attacker is starting to use things like weapons, something that's going to cause great bodily harm, serious injury, or death to the officer or others. Please understand, law enforcement officers are not expected to start at level one and then end up at level five. The main thing here to focus on is the use of force must be appropriate to the level of the threat and can only escalate in response to the threat. Those threats may be your actions, so you have a lot more power than you may have been originally led to believe. This model is going to vary from state to state, agency to agency, and from one policy to the next. I would also suggest that you would look up your local police department's deadly force policy. Most of them you can find online. If there's something that I said that you disagree with, call your state senator, call your congressperson. The more informed you are, the better decisions you're going to be able to make to getting the type of police reform you actually want for you and your community. If you'd like to learn more, please visit our website at theblacksanctuary.com. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment below.